is up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Fusion video. We've got something cool, excited going on here. I'm going to show a little bit how to use the generative design feature, but then also maybe make this a little bit faster with the automate feature as well. We'll see how far we get into this video. But the one thing I'm going to do is showcase this kind of backwards first. So you see, we have this shelf right here that has some interesting kind of organic geometry. And that is using generative design. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a design, create some components, or I would say factors that are going to affect that design. And then we let some generative design properties dictate what would be the best solution for those parameters. So how do we do this? So here's a final product. This comes from the generative design of a design we've already created. Where does that come from is one step further back and that is under the generative design tab. Now you notice this looks a little bit different. We have some, some interesting th things going on here, which we will unpack, but notice just this first part is this green part right here. That is what's called my preserve geometry. I only want to preserve, or sorry, my, uh, my obstacle, my geometry that I'm gonna use part of my design. The obstacle geometry is when we go through the generative design process, we wanna make sure that this does not get interfered with. So it would be for a hole for a clearance that we're gonna use, for example. And also we want this back to be flush. So you see I have three sets of obstacle, or three holes here for obstacle geometry for my holes, but then also one more on the back. But where does that even come from? And that first step is just comes from the design. We created some basic geometry for our design and then just let the computer think. And we're gonna do that. The problem with that is, is that it does take a little bit of power on your computer, specifically uh, just letting it process to go through. You send it up to the cloud, does a bunch of cal calculations. So let's just see how far we get, and then we'll look at automate maybe here later. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some geometry here, is I'm going to just draw two rectangles, and I'm gonna give them, I'm gonna make this shelf to be a three inch by three inch shelf and then with a quarter inch thickness and then I'm going to trim up some of those as well. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and just hit finish sketch. I'm going to extrude this. Let's do uh, 8.5 inches. And then the next thing I need to do is then create some holes for my, uh, this is gonna be mounting onto a pegboard. And so I need holes for those screws to go through so I can mount it nice and clean. First thing I do is let's click on, let's create a sketch. And I'm gonna do two circles. Let's actually, let's do all three while we're at it. You know what, I take that back. Let's just do two for now and you'll see in a second. Uh, those through screw holes for me are gonna be 3 16 of an inch. So I'm gonna dimension both of those to 3 16 of an inch and give them a dimension of a half an inch away. Ooh, actually let's do three quarters of an inch and you'll see why in a second. Three quarters of an inch away from the side walls. 1.75, which means they should be a whole increment between the two. I know that on my pegboard, the spacing between each hole is an inch. So I have to make sure that this parameter right here is in a full inch increment. It's not skewed one way or the other or seven and a half inches because then my holes won't line up on my pegboard. Uh, and then let's just go ahead for the sake of cleanliness here. Let's go do a half an inch from the top. I'm gonna click on create. Let's do rectangular pattern. And let's just grab those two circles and let's go down for two instances, two inches. Hit finish sketch, things look good. I'm now gonna hit extrude. So I'm going to extrude all four of these holes, cut them out, boom, looks good. Now we could come in here and throw in our own geometry to create our brackets here. However, we're going to use generative design process. We are ready for that now. I'm going to click on the under the design tab. You see generative design. 
there's going to be a couple of things that we want to see and we're going to create a study okay there's a couple things going on here let's go through one step at a time we need to create uh, and I'm going to kind of go from left to right here what I'm going to do first is I need to edit my model and and that's going to provide some obstacle geometry and preservation geometry so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come in here and I'm going to create a sketch on this back plane and I'm going to project all of that geometry hit finish sketch let's extrude these four holes notice I'm in a slightly different environment than design we don't have uh, we're not affecting our original design we are just changing some parameters in generative design so this isn't affecting my original at all and those are going to be as new bodies and let's just make those symmetric extrusions just so I'm sure nothing is going to be a problem for us and the next thing I'm going to do is also extrude this back piece and I'm going to keep that as a new body that is a slight bit overkill but allows you to see I'm going to have four holes for my obstacle geometry that back plate to keep that back plate flush and then we should be okay from here so I'm going to click finish model so let's keep going from left to right so under preserve geometry it's going to say what bodies do you want to preserve and now that's going to turn green so this tells me that we are going to preserve this geometry they're not going to change it my obstacle geometry are is going to be my four holes and that back plate looks great we do have some structural constraints here so things you don't want to move or loads are going to come from so my structural constraint is is that this bottom piece is not going to move so rotate down the bottom piece not going to move click OK next thing is structural loads since this is a shelf we are going to put some things on it and let's just call that five pounds of force that might be a little much let's do three pounds of force okay as we keep going from left to right let's hit objectives we can do minimizing mass or stiffness doesn't really matter too much uh, however what we are going to do is go under manufacturing methods and we're going to deselect milling and keep it as additive this means it makes it 3d printable uh, using additive manufacturing processes then click OK the materials we can go on or down a rabbit hole here for these materials uh, but I'm just going to choose plastic I'm going to try to find something that's pretty close to what we're going to be printing with and doesn't look like there's anything too much I'm just going to pick one and run with it okay only one preserve so I, I'm, I'm clicked on it without even talking about it. so the next thing we got is this pre-check it'll go through and say hey is there anything wrong with your generative design process before we throw this in the machine and it does all of its calculations have we done all of our necessary work and it says hey you only have one preserved body is this okay is this, if this is the only thing you're seeing you're looking in a good spot because we only want to print one thing and, and this is looking great so click OK and now we click on previewer uh, and this will is the part that's going to take some time so let's pause this and come back all right for me this is taking some time but you can kind of see what it's doing is it's producing some geometry that is going to satisfy the requirements that we've put in there and so what we can see is hey that looks great we're good to go the only problem is, is that it looks like it might be 3D printing too much body. So as it does the general design process, it will throw in a bunch of material and then start to take away unnecessary material and see if it still satisfies the case requirements. So for us, it's that three pound force. We could play around with this preview, but I'm going to go on to generate now. There we go and let's generate one study now this does cost some uh, credits so if you're on a hobbyist uh, environment you know you have to be careful with that however if you're on the educational model you should have unlimited 
So we're going to generate the one study. I'm going to call this shelf 2.0. 2.0, there we go. Click Save, and then it's going to go through this Jenner design. This does take for a while, so usually we'll have my students do this. Hit Go, and let me come back and check on this tomorrow. Depending on how complex your design is, this might take longer, this might be shorter, but I'm gonna go ahead and close this on up, and then let's look at what's gonna be produced from that. So this is something I've done earlier. So I'm back to my generative design. You can see my obstacle and preservation geometry, and then I'm gonna click on uh, my job status. So my, or job status, not next to that is generative results. We're gonna click on that. You can see what kind of outputs did it create? And here was one of my outputs. Hey, that looks pretty clean. It looks usable. What do we then do from here? And that is click design from outcome. What that'll do is it will create your design, but throw it into a new design space. So you notice I've got this right here now. Notice it says untitled. We could, we could save this as generative design shelf. And then as our usual thing, we can then ship this out as an STL file, 3D print it, and mount it, and it's good to go. That will be up us for it, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know down in the comment section. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.